Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. I think when it comes to self-healing and, and, and a self-journey, people have this expectation of what it should be or how it should go, all the sources at which you find that inspiration, mm. right? Like, as I said, I found mine in a video game. I found my purpose in wrestling. Like, you know, I'm, I'm an old emo kid, right? Like, clearly, because I'm just a bunch of, of motion. So, like, for me, I find, per you know, songs and music that can speak lyrically more than I ever could, even though I'm weirdly articulate. But even mm. an example is, did, did you see the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once? Uh, no. Oh, dear God, what an absolutely incredible movie. So, came out a couple of years ago, one, best picture, it's beautiful. Um, it's one of those, you know, one of those bits of media that I watched that and I went, I, that movie understands me in a way that I was not ready for because of the way it talks about mental health and suicidal ideation and, you know, overcoming that. And like, it's, it's incredible, right? Like, so I would highly recommend, I think it's a movie's incredible, but like even, you know, finding, you know, we, we presume that like we look for the good things in the world, but like I said, being an old emo kid, like finding things that are like the bad in the world, the things that are pain, but connecting with it, you know, like I, my favorite genre of music is pop punk, right? Cause pop punk is like, it's bubble gum. It's chewy. It's like junk food, but lyrically they're depressing as shit. And cause it's what it is. It's like, that's why I love about it. So like, you know, during 2020, like machine gun Kelly's tickets to my downfall just nailed it. Like it's this, you know, friendly two thousands pop punk exterior, very blink one eight two, but lyrically it's dark, depressing. And, you know, talking about the challenges that just come with being in someone's head and in even by extension, and I'm just like name dropping now. Another one would be bring me the horizons, um, post human survival horror. So this was a, a, an album that was made entirely during the pandemic and each individual person was never in the same room. Um, and in a time where people were trying to make music or content that was like, Hey, it's not all bad. Like it was really dismissive. They made an EP that was just like, everything is fucked and we can all acknowledge it. Like we can all, we can all acknowledge that it's horrible and let's deal with it together. And I was like, fuck yes. And they're one of the best albums I've ever listened to. Um, but yeah, as I said, so like the idea is like you find inspiration in weird places or you motivation do. to like, to change something, to find something. And, you know, people will dismiss a connection to music. People would, you know, um, dismiss a connection to, to video games. Like I imagine like every, most conversations when I, talk, when I, when I talk about, you know, oh, this game is, this, everyone goes, Pfft. but you like, like I did to you, Hey, like very quickly you go, oh, I get it. And like, that's that moment. And like, yeah. And you know, it's a weird thing yeah. to, to say that changed your life, but no, it's great. And I think you're right. Everyone has a, everyone has a moment, don't they? Everyone has a clicking moment mm. and uh, you found yours and I'm glad that you found it at the right time, mate. Cause it sounds like, and it l certainly looks like even just with showing pictures like this, you look like you're on the right path. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that was so for context, that's me holding a custom made, a Leviathan ax from God of war, uh, holding a, uh, a replica of the Thor's hammer Mjolnir from God of war Ragnarok in front of my God of war Ragnarok poster. Um, and I was going to a, the Norse mythology themed, uh, restaurant in Melbourne called Mjolnir because they were doing a God of War inspired menu. And it was like one of my first dates with my current partner and she's still around. So I think that's a win. Um, I was like, Hey, I'm going to take you for the nerdiest dinner you've ever had. And she's like, that sounds amazing. So big win. <laughs> well, coming towards the end then. Right. Oh, good. Cause I, I, I'm doing lots of talking. No, no, no. <laughs> and it's, it, I feel like we, I feel like we've covered everything, but I've got two, I've got two questions how I normally answer it. But Shoot. before I do ask those two questions, I'm going to go with the final third. <laughs> if, if there's anything that we've missed from your journey, your path, 
uh, and it's and, and you had to say it, what would that be? If the, I mean, we might have covered everything, but if there's um, anything that we've missed, do you that's worth sharing? No, I've I've kind of hit all the all all like the the things like yeah. I guess by extension. One other thing that you know, because you talked about like your, yourself going on like a bit of a weight loss journey as well, and you know, I did the same thing, and, and now my job is literally to inspire more people because I work for the Manshake now, right? Like, you know, yeah. the the thing, the company that helped change my life, right? One of the things I I tend to, to to stress is that like weight loss or you know as a change, it's 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 as mental as it is physical. Right, like those those two oh. things together, like you can't have one or the other. It's got to be both. And as I said, I learned the hard way, you know. And even by extension, I learned the hard way of, you know, yeah, you're gonna lose some weight, but be careful what else you lose, you know. Yeah. Be, you know, because I threw myself into that life, and I do think it cost me my marriage as well as a bunch of other things. Right, like you know, yeah. I made sure that after ev- every day at work, I you know after I finished work and I would stop at the gym and I'd be there a couple of hours and I'd come home and like yeah I looked fantastic I felt fucking fantastic but like you know well what did it cost me like everything yeah. Yeah. and like now I'm ha- the happiest I've ever been and like yeah. yeah I've put some weight back on am I happy about it no not really but like but you, you've done it before you know you can do it again yeah I can right? absolutely do it again but like you know I, I don't want to right now I'm just happy. My, my- Mine wasn't physical, believe it or not, because I I tore my meniscus in England playing basketball, so I actually couldn't run. Mm. But I um I just cut out. I I started doing cold exposure. Um, I was doing that for mental clarity to be more present, and I just read loads of different stuff, and obviously started to dive into the brain and whatnot. But I I was started jumping in freezing cold water, started with cold showers, start then going to cold exposure. Uh, doing breath work, which presented me to obviously get the oxygen to my brain a little bit more and a little bit deeper and a little bit better. And um, I cut out sugar. Mm. Um, oh, sugar's brutal. I love mate, it, the, but it's brutal. Yeah. Oh, mate, it, it activates is you know, that, 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 that gene, I think it's called RF, I've tried to memorize this, uh, RF1A2 yeah. in the back of your tongue, and it connects to your part of your limbic system, your nucleus accumbens, I can't even pronounce it. And, mate, I love it. I, when it's out and chocolate's out on a Friday night for movie night, I'm onto it. Don't get me wrong. And all this ultra-processed food, love it. Like, everyone talks about it, and, like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a well-spoken sort of um, fact, but it's absolutely correct. Like, from a biological level, it stimulates the same part of your brain as doing cocaine. And I've not yeah. done cocaine, but if it's anything like sugar, it sounds no. pretty fantastic. You yeah. know, but like, <laughs> when, yes, and then very similar to hard drugs is the more sugar you have, suddenly your threshold has gotten higher, and therefore you yeah. need more to achieve the more. same result. And, you know, yep. next thing you know. And the body, you know, the, 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 the body, the physiological part of the human body has been around for just shy of 7 million years. and <laughs> Just, just a small amount of time. Yeah, well, it, well, it is comparison to what the world's been going, isn't for, it? No, right? Yeah, we're like oh, yeah, the last like page less than of a this percent. giant book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's less than a percent of the time it's been yeah. going around. If you think about it, oh, my lights just got off on because it's quarter to eleven. Hold on, um, but you know, I think we. Oh, I just need to turn my light. Hold on, oh, my <laughs> it talks so it goes long. Off the at power to eleven out. every night. <laughs> there you go. It's coming back on, and um, you know, sugar was never. The sugar was never meant to enter the human body. You know, half glucose, half fructose, mm. and glucose is not what we in, need. Not but... in the refined form that it is, because that's the other misconception about sugar. Sugar is in everything. It's just a, it's just a, you know, a, a different. It's a broken down version of carbs, essentially, right? And we yeah. do need carbs to function. Sugar is what gives us energy. Um, you know, and well, we... it depends what type of energy you're talking about. Absolutely, like it depends. If you're on... talking about energy ATP, yeah. it's not. No. If you're talking about energy as heat, it is. Yes. But I mean, in terms of like things that we, you know, like obviously sugar, when we think sugar, we think glucose, but then we also have to c- c- count like sucrose and fructose and, and, and other variants. Well, fructose that, is poison. Yeah. You know, but like it's what we get out of fruit and stuff. And like, it, you know, if you isolate it, it's fucked. But like, if, That's you, have it, yeah. if you have it in conjunction, like everyone's like, mm. oh, an apple's full of sugar. I'm like, yeah, but it's full of mm. fiber and other vitamins yeah. and other great yeah. things. So just eat the apple. Because what's that? It's too much sugar. That didn't stop you from eating that chocolate before. Eat the fucking right. apple. Um, yeah, eat the fucking apple. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. But again, you know, you. Some, I was reading the other week about uh, mandarins or oranges. I can't remember which one. But you let's go with oranges. Uh, you need be mandarin. Eight. Mandarins are sweet as shit. Yeah. Well, we need. Well, it, this is more about the 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 fiber or the, oh, the yes, nutrients you'll take yeah. from the fruit. You'll uh, let's go with oranges. I don't, I don't know, what it was, but you need eight oranges to match the value of one that your grandparents used to eat. 
Oh, yeah, because yeah, they've all been, like, you know, genetically engineered to yes. buggery. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Uh, you know, and that's the problem that we're, we're living in, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I, I took sugar out, and I noticed myself being more cl- clear. I wasn't brain fogged. Mm. My brain fog had lifted. I was able to take in more information. I was able to read. I never fucking read a book before the age of 38. And all of a sudden I'm reading a book a week, you know? Yeah. And I just found this different part of myself that I'd never found before. And, and, and you know, I got rid of my autoimmune issue. I reversed it by taking sugar out. I got rid of dairy for a while. I've re-entered dairy again because I like it in my coffee. Yeah, it's look, I'm lactose <laughs> but, intolerant. And then very quickly you realize all the best foods have dairy in them. It's so crap. And yeah. it's, you know... Yeah, 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 but uh, look, I live, I live my rule now, my life with an eight to twenty rule. Does it have a cut out sugar one hundred percent like I did? No, yeah. I go with eight to twenty, and yeah. I don't eat for nineteen hours a day. You know, I allow I allow my cells to replenish and and do what they need to do. And yeah, yeah. I, I'm clear. Um, do I stick to that religiously? No, sometimes I break it. Yeah, but because full restriction I, I, is just setting up, you're setting yourself up to fail later. Like you've got to yeah. give yourself some some leniency, but also yeah. knowing that you know. It's part of it. Yeah, um, that's right. Well, the, so there's a couple other things I just want to, want to touch upon because we talked a lot yeah. about um, like neurodiversity, particularly like ADHD as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I think the big thing for, for me, and, and, I, and I hope, you know, everyone, I've, the amount of people I've spoken to about ADHD and has got my diagnosis is, is crazy. Um, you know, it's so that you do. Oh, it's it's fantastic. You know, it's one of those things where, like, you know, never underestimate the positive influence you can have on the world around you, right? Mm. Because without even realizing, just this conversation and or any conversation that you have on the show, like, you may not realize the impact of what this could do by by complete accident. Um, but mm. that also, you know, goes in another way, right? Like, so there are people that will discuss ADHD. Um, as not a real thing, blah, 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 blah. But they also talk about the medication side of things, right? Everyone's like, oh, I don't want to get addicted to it. And I'm like, why, if it's so addictive, why do I keep forgetting it to take it some days? You know, <laughs> like, and on top of that, it's, you wouldn't tell a diabetic to stop using insulin in case they get addicted, right? Because it's, it's literally something that their body is missing. They are deficient in it. In the same way that me, my brain is literally incapable of producing enough either dopamine or neuroadrenaline to meet what I need to be a functioning human, right? So mm. I have my meds every day. And my life has gotten so much better. I used the analogy before, right? It's the glasses to my vision impairment. Does it repair my eyesight? No, but it makes it bearable. It makes it better. And like, is it the answer? Absolutely not. You, it, you know, if someone gets diagnosed and all they do is just have the medication, they're not gonna, they're not gonna see change. They're not gonna yeah. see all the symptomology of that diagnosis improving because it is mm. more than that. They, it is just the thing that gets you in a position where you can can take control of that diagnosis. Like, yeah. it is not an excuse. It is not a, you know, it's a, sorry, it's not an excuse for behavior. It may be the mm reason for behavior but you don't that you if, if i you know said working in youth mental health with neurodiverse kids many of them were like oh i can't do this because of my adhd or oh, i can't do this because my asd i'm like bullshit you can't i'm like both oh, yeah. paris and i we are diagnosed and we built this fucking thing so like mm. you to tell me that you can't you can't no 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 no. you can that's the problem though isn't it yeah you know i hit i had a I, at schools that i work and i have kids come up to me saying I can't, uh, you have to, you have to allow me to do it because I have ADHD uh, or ASD or whatever, or yeah. autism, whatever. I'm like, no, don't let it define you. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay that you've got it. And, 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 and I, I acknowledge that you are acknowledging it to me, uh, but don't let it define you and don't let it use it as an excuse yeah. for you not to live in this world. Cause even with, even properly. from a language perspective, right? You're like, oh, that's mm-hmm. John. He's autistic. You know, you're not going to go, oh, that's John. He's diabetic. Like it doesn't happen. Right? I love using diabetes yeah. as an example because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a thing that everyone's comfortable with. Right. And, you know, yeah. you know, it's just like, oh, you know, that just doesn't, it's not how you communicate. Like, and even then, as you said, like, yes, it, do I talk about my neurodiversity a lot? Hell yeah. Because it provides a further understanding. It, re- it creates mm-hmm. that awareness. It removes that barrier of taboo. Like, I think I've demonstrated in this conversation that like, I think a lot of taboos, like there are lines of course, but you know, there is something in, in being open and sharing who you are and how you function and what you do in the hopes of possibly in ch- helping someone or assisting someone, sorry, assisting because helping yeah. means they were powerless. Assisting means we're walking beside each other. Um, yeah. 
you know, so even from, from that, that standpoint, right? Like take that information, like even as you mentioned with those kids, like, oh, I can't do those things. Well, what can we, what do we do to make it sure you can't? What are, like not what accommodations, what understandings, like meet me in the middle, right? An yeah. example with those headphones. Okay, I will let you use those headphones, just not when I'm talking. If, if it's quite, you know, if it's quiet time, working time, go nuts. But the second yeah. I tell you to take them out, you take them out. It's the same, cause the same thing goes with my son. He loves his iPad because YouTube and games are great stimulus. But we have built in an understanding, especially with games as well, that we go, hey, 10 more minutes. He goes, yep, no worries. And he's done in that 10 minutes because we've built that respect of being like, I will let you play these things. We'll play them together. We build these boundaries. We build these, these outlines, but we both yeah. agree and acknowledge that what those boundaries mm. exist. Right. So, you know, especially if, if you're a parent of, of a kid that's neurodiverse, like it's to have those understandings. Right. And then finding those moments to sort of get your little win. Like for the first time this entire school year, my son has been on time the last four days last four school days and this has never happened and like oh, we wow. had that one moment i can't even tell you what it was but he was like i'm gonna go to school and we went to school early and then through po you know great positive reinforcement positive behavior therapy um without even realizing don't tell him he's speak we're working therapy on him um <laughs> you know he's you know within himself going yeah. oh i can do this i can get ready in time absolutely yeah. and you know and that's that's those those little things right mm. um I I would yeah. love to be able to go on the computer games with uh, with my son, but he emotionally isn't regular, doesn't regulate himself well with yeah. the TV and all that stuff. So, he, so we don't allow. We just introduced the Wii, though. We oh, just introduced oh, the Wii. I love the Wii. Well, we've done that because we thought he's moving. Yeah. And he, it, we're meeting him to his needs because obviously he has the peer pressure with everybody else having games. We are living in a world where games are, are there and everywhere. I grew up on Sonic. I grew up on Duke Nukem. I grew up on mm. um, NBA and FIFA and all of those games. I, you know, it never did me any harm. But looking back, you know, in England, it goes dark at three thirty. Yeah, and <laughs> what it's cold. Uh, yeah, yeah. What else am I going to do? And there's crime on the streets. You, you just don't do it until basketball took me off the streets. You know, when mm. I hit eight, nine, whatever. But he, he just doesn't come off it well at all. But we yeah. introduced the Wii, and he's been beautiful he's active he's loving the basketball he's doing it so it's it's steps yes we understand the steps needed and eventually i can't wait to get to be able to go and play him on fifa and play him on nba on yeah. maybe a shooting game here when he's old enough and mature enough to be able to handle that and not you know think right I'm, that's a good thing to do in real life because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? yeah as you said it's just that understanding right like my son's been been exposed to games literally since he was born there's like literally yeah. i was playing battlefield one when he was in his crib next to the tv i was like destroying things in world war one and he was like yeah. taking the sound in right but you know as, as i said like for us it's it, it is that it's that understanding it's that learning right like yeah. you know he knows that there are games that i say no to yeah. and i tell him why and like your he's also has that luxury if he goes, Oh, hey, can I play this game? I've probably got it. I've probably got a code for it somewhere at some point in some time. So it's always available to him. Mm. But there are some that I go, nobody. Yeah. And I explain why. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, not in like, you know, this game has, you know, coarse language and high violence, but hey, bud, it's a bit violent. It's not really work. So like we have, you know, the the big ones in the schoolyard are like Roblox and Fortnite and GTA. And I go, no, nah. you can play mm -hmm. near on anything else you want, but those ones are a no go. And he goes, okay. Yeah, yeah good. That's that's smart. I yeah. think that's smart. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah. I guess I, I, I don't know where I was going with that. The video game stuff and then the the um the the ADHD stuff as well. Yeah, it's just you know I think there's a lot that needs to be taken. You know, because as I said, like my my entire role before the one I have now is we took what people loved and made it the building blocks for improvement. Like you know we were we were using um, Dungeons and Dragons as a way to replicate. Uh, outside world scenarios, but in a safe space. So when we're, yeah. when we're working with individuals that have difficulty reading social cues or knowing what to do in a conversation, you know, we, as the games master, we're standing at the front of the room and we're, you know, crossing our arms and using a to hard tone and they, but they have the safety to go, Hey, why are you doing that? You know, where like if you were at JB Hi-Fi and they're standing there and you're like, excuse me, Mr. Guy behind the counter, why do you look cranky? Like that's not a socially acceptable thing. 
but yeah. we're teaching, you know, we were teaching them in a space. That they go, so next time they do go to JB Hi-Fi and the guy behind the counter is shitty because most of the time they are, you know, he goes, oh, he's not shitty at me. I, this is what I learned in that moment. This is how I learned to communicate with a person that is disgruntled in a shop, in a workplace environment. Yeah. And then by then how to communicate, the, you know, like we took what the, you know, it's not a waste of time. Like, I, oh my God, the best thing ever was when I got, when I built that, that, that company and we were successful and we were growing and I got to, you know, thankfully, like I said, my dad bought me that, that PS1 when I was eight years old and he didn't realize that. That's the one I had. He didn't realize that that console was going to reshape my entire life and put me on the path that I am now. But like, yeah. I remember that, but you know, back then, both of them, my mom and my dad were like, no, oh, games are a waste of time. Blah, 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 blah. Never get paid. Blah, blah, blah. So the, the, the joy I had when I'm like, hey, check out my job. I get paid to play video games with people. Suck yeah. it. I made, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to make the things I love my work. And as I said, you know, to go as we're, as we're closing this out, that's how you lead your own way. You shape, you shape oh, your mate. world. You've summed it up and brought it back to full circle. Well, on that note then, um, if somebody was listening to this and been through what you're go uh, going through, what you've been through or something similar to that effect. I was going to say, they've been through exactly stories. what I have. That would be fascinating. I would love to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, with all the different combinations. Yeah. <laughs> you, generally speaking of this topic of this episode then, right? <laughs> um, what advice would you give to somebody? Um, if you could sum up this episode and, and you were going to give a, somebody a piece of a, a line of ex, uh, personal development strategy or, or, or a track to go on for the future, what would that be? Um, yeah, I think it would be some of the things that I've mentioned, which is, yeah, ne you know, never underestimate the positive impact you can have on the world around you. Um, yeah, exactly, cause that does yeah. help you rethink how you communicate with people, how you engage with people. Um, because you know, you, you being a little bit shitty or a bit snarky, or if you're on, on, Twitter or Facebook, just being a right prick, like mm. you don't realize the impact that could have, but by you giving someone a moment, um, talking to them, having a conversation, providing listening, providing understanding, you mm. know, you may not realize like, and this is going to sound like a brag and it is, but it isn't, you know, I, I had the joy today of writing a before, like a before and after testimonial for my job of a mate of mine that I haven't seen in about a decade. He hits me up out of nowhere and goes, Hey, because of your weight loss journey, I started my own and I've now, you know, 20, was it 17 kilos down? And I haven't spoken to him in ages. So when he hit me up and I went, Holy shit. You, you know, like you just didn't realize, like I said, you know, he and I used to work together at McDonald's in like 2012, 13, you mm. know what I mean? And I'm like out of nowhere to be hit up and be like, oh my God, you know? And then the times I've had conversations with people about, you know, my neurodiversity or whatever. And, you know, X amount of months later, they go, Hey, um, I took your advice. I went down a path and I have it. I'm medicated and life's better. You know, it's just, you don't, you, one of the things that I've struggled with forever is my own value and what I bring to the world. Um, you know, cause we all have this idea of we're going to do this big grand thing. And that thing is what will define us into our future. Um, and I've come to realize, and I think this is probably a good bit of advice as well is, you know, find the things that you're good at, find the part of your world that you can control in not in a manipulative way, but in like, a, it's your part, like yeah. find your strengths, play to your strengths, you know, normally being an, an extroverted, huge amplified individual like me, uh, doesn't always work in many places. Like I, you know, work, I work now in my previous role was within the corporate space and they're full of boring ass neurotypicals who never really say what they're thinking. Cause it's all in business jargon. It's just a bunch of wank fest, right? But like, so for me, I don't fit in those spaces. So I find the spaces I do fit and then I succeed. You know, like, yeah. does that mean I'm going to be a CEO one day at, or a C-suite? No, no, no. Because I'm not willing to do the hustle. I'm not willing to play the game the same way. I'm not willing to call, you know, to, to not see the bullshit. And yeah. I always thought that was a negative. But no, no, no. Those things are a positive. It's allowed me oh, to yeah. impact the world in a different way. You know, like whether it be doing doing for me like doing commentary on a particular wrestling match and i am just 
selling this person's character that they're like the best person or like the evilest person in the world and you know it's, it's for them it's validating their role their character the person that they're building um yeah. you know and, and like, i'm just talking garbage but like to them it's powerful it's something you know like it's I didn't realize Definitely. that my ability to stand and how long we've been going for, like a long time, just talking at something um, would okay. have that impact, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just don't, you may not realize, like, you know, I, I for years, I thought I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I, I thought I could do these. I'm not saying like limit yourself, but like, you know, understand, once you understand who you are and what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, you just build to them and mm. surprise you'll succeed but will you fail yeah. fuck yeah you'll fail you'll fail a lot and you know one of the things that like uh, you know it's the amount of people that say like you know that big moment of failure or whatever to helps define you as a person it kind of does but like if we think about all the characters that we love in media whether it be you know uh walter white and breaking bad or tony soprano in the sopranos like they're, those characters are amazing and dynamic, not because of the things that they are good at. They are mm. amazing because in conjunction with the things they're good at, but, they're, but are the things that they struggle with, their challenges and what they do to overcome them. So as much as it's, you know, it's hard to be like, you know, all these shit things have happened to you. They help build you who you are. Does that make them okay? Absolutely not. We all go through various levels of horrible shit, but you can still take that you can still take that experience as garbage as it is and build from that because we can't change the past to make that future better so i think that would be would be a very roundabout advice just you know it's, it's, it's very advice, it's very easy advice to give because it requires a lot of self love um and self understanding and and the thing that i that i'm still struggling with is self forgiveness um mm. and once you can kind of hit those beats and you see what, you know, what you're here to do, if you're a believer in that. Um, yeah. Mate, perfect. Couldn't have ended it any better myself. I could have if it was like five minutes less. I just really crammed that into a more <laughs> succinct uh, delivery. No, was, you, you're very articulate, mate. You are. You really are. And you you know your journey. You know your path. Is, it's evident, right? So you're going to answer this very easily. But what is your purpose for the future? Ooh. What do you think your life purpose is? Oh, well, my life purpose is my son. I get it's an easy answer. I said it before. It's it's my son. Yeah. It's making, yeah. you know, as I said, like I, I always have that fear that he's going to become me. And that came from a, an individual that focused on the things they didn't like about themselves. Um, you know, is that he's a carbon copy of me. We're identical in so many ways. Um, for better or worse, he is destined to become me. Um, I don't think that should be a fair look at you, mate. I was look at say, the goodness you're giving to the world, right? I've now come to a place where that it's okay. Like he can take the better parts of me. He can take the things that I did to to learn and to grow, and and I will be right there beside him. You know, I'm like just because I'm not there every day doesn't mean I'm not there. We video call each other every day. If he ever needs me, I'm there in a fucking heartbeat. Like that, that is what it means to, to, to be better, right? You know, mm -hmm. that's my purpose is to whatever he needs, however he needs support, because obviously, as I mentioned with his diagnosis too, that comes with a lot of understanding, a lot of alterations and eating the same six meals all the time. Um, but you know, we work and we adjust and we, we find to what it is. And, and my purpose will be, um, you know, until the, as I said, the, the, the day that I, I shuffle off this mortal coil and I, and I look at him and, and whatever path his life takes. Um, and I will look at that and be like, that's it. I did it. And as someone that feared, that feared death out of the fear that, you know, I don't, I, I never liked the idea that it just all ends and that it all mm. was for nothing. But mm. I don't think that way anymore because everything we do has that little sprinkle and, it, and like not in a legacy fashion, but it will, it will live on whether we, you know, and you just choose whether that could, that what lived on is good. 
it, the sprinkles is the perfect analogy, isn't it? You know, mm. spreading that little love every single day. You can't do it in big spurts because it'll come at a cost. But those little sprinkles uh, make the whole difference, don't they? And yeah. Oh, and then um, also right. my, my other purpose is to talk about video games and, uh, in, you know, yell, <laughs> yell really loud into microphones at wrestling shows. Turns out that might be my purpose also. I'll have to come to one one day. Oh, whenever they're in Geelong. They'll be, we'll be back in Geelong in November. Uh, oh, I don't know when yeah. this is going out, but absolutely. Brilliant. Family we'll friendly it. too, by the way. We're there. We're <laughs> absolutely there. Ryan, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining me on my journey because this is my journey leading our own way. And um, I, I just believe everyone's got a story and every story is worth sharing. And yours was definitely worth hearing. And I know I don't there'll think be I plenty. I gave you a choice, really. You just had to kind of hear it. Like, it's just. just <laughs> no, I wanted to as soon as I met you, mate. I wanted to. <laughs> you know, when that personality came out, mate, within me. That, that first minute of me just, I don't know, just yapping your ear mm. off, it came out and I loved it. And um, uh, we, we straight away, I think we knew straight, but on both parts, we needed to do an episode, didn't yeah. you? Once I explained the podcast to you and the and the, and the the meaning behind it, you mm. were like, hey, I was like, let's yeah. do it. Like the expression yeah. that I love to use is like, that's my bullshit, right? You know, I say that in like, it, it, it is a, a nice sentiment, right? And they're like, you know, wrestling is my bullshit. You know, it's bullshit to some people, but like, it's my bullshit. And yeah, you know, same absolutely. as this, like having these conversations, these open dialogues about, you know, yeah. various parts of, of us as, as being. And, you know, like, that's my bullshit. You know, yeah. I love this. This is stuff. my bullshit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Because not many people have reached out and gone, hey, man, what is this bullshit all about? I, I would have told them, but it's my bullshit. Yeah. So don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, someone's like, I don't get it. You're like, I don't care. Yeah, so people go care. like, nah, I don't get wrestling. I'm like, okay. Oh, I do. Yeah. And I love it. So it sucks for you, but that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I'm totally. If anyone asks me why you're doing it, I'll go, wait, I get to talk. I get to meet. I get to learn. And I have no one looking over shoulder at me controlling what I do. Yep. So and, and most of it's because I, I want it. to, and it makes me happy. Absolutely. Perfect way to end, Ryan. Um, well, I know everybody's going to get something from you, mate. And, um, it's just going to be incredible, and I can't wait for this to air. I want to get it out earlier, but... Um, <laughs> no, there's, a, there's a system, Andy. There's a system. There is a system that I need to stick to, Andy. Yes, <laughs> you're right. Uh, <laughs> um, thanks, Ryan. Um, I, I feel like we could probably do another episode in the future, mate, to be fair, but um, thank you again for joining me on Leading Our Own Way, and um, we'll, we'll have to hang out sometime. It'll be a pleasure. Absolutely, and I really appreciate um, the, the, the invite and, uh, yeah, the freedom just to talk nonsense at you. So thank you. No, I loved it. I learned a lot from you today and I definitely changed my summer perspectives on things and um, something I can even just take to the classroom when I'm with, with children, uh, especially the one that I highlighted earlier. So it was fantastic. No, I appreciate it. Ryan, thank you again. And to everybody else that joined us, give big Ryan a wave and uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch you there. Oh, look at that. We'll catch you on the next one. Next week's guest will be back. We, I don't know who he is right now, but <laughs> you'll find out. We'll speak to you soon. Have a great week, everyone. Take care. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.